the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomas Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate podcast. I am Luis, your host, and today we have a very special guest, Cristiano from Los Angeles, who's one of the top realtors in the area, and he has done around 600 transactions. So you can imagine the amount of experience he has. So he's been in the market for around 20 years, and he's going to let us know about his story. Hello, Cristiano. How are you today? Good. Thanks for having me. That is great. So could you start telling us uh, how was the market 20 years ago? Well, I started in 2003. So in 2003, the market was hot. Uh, things were selling, properties were trading really fast and with multiple offers. Uh, interest rates are not as low as they were, you know, a couple of years ago, but it's just the demand was really high and pretty much anything you listed would sell quick. Wow. Okay. And how did growing up into the real estate uh, family influence uh, your decision to pursue a career in the real estate market? Well, when I moved here back in uh, 1997, I dabbled with a bunch of different businesses. And my last business, business was in uh, health supplements. And I sold that company and I decided you know, I always had an eye for real estate and I was, was attracted to it. But at the time, one of my best friends just got into real estate and we were chatting about something else and say, hey, I just got into real estate. And I was like, oh, I always wanted to do that. Uh, he said, well, if you want to do it, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what to do and you can uh, get started. Of course, he was a Keller Williams, so he had the ulterior <laughs> motive <laughs> to have me in because there's a, you know, pipeline. But yeah, so I started, we joined the same company and we started together. All right. And the rest is history. <laughs> all right. And was it natural for you to be successful since the beginning? I mean, were you closing so many transactions since the beginning? No, not really. It's hard. You know, I tell people all the time, I actually have a lot of friends that started after me and they gave up. You know, real estate is a tough business. Yeah. It's not what you see on the million dollar listing and all those shows, you know, that is all glamour and it's tough. So in the beginning, my first transactions, I got lucky my first year. I, I It was a funny story, actually. But my first transactions were with friends. And then I used to go to the office a lot. You know, I was putting the work. So I would go to the office a lot. I watch a lot of the classes. I, I was trying to learn as much as I could. And uh, my office was in a, like a little mall and this mall had a gym. So okay. over the weekend, I went to work out and I said, well, let me go to the office and take a look and uh, see um, if there's any mail for me. So as I come into the office with gym clothes, there is a floor person there, like an assistant that was answering the phones. And she's like, oh, there is a call here. This guy wants to buy a house in Hollywood Hills. Would you like to take it? I said, sure, why not? <laughs> so I took that call and I met one of my buyers that became my good friend. Um, they were looking for a house in the Hollywood Hills, which was where my office was. And the budget was like $3 million. Wow. And, and so we, I showed them a bunch of houses. We got along. We, and eventually they bought something. So in my first year, I actually sold a big house. Uh, just by being in the office <laughs> on the week, <laughs> uh, it was lucky. And then a lot of my other transactions were my friends. And on my second year, it wasn't so successful. So I kind of slowed down. I was trying to do my best, 
I was trying all these new things with uh, lead generation and everything. And I was spending a lot of money on my credit cards, trying to, you know, buy all the systems of Zillow and other things that didn't really pan out. And I got a lot of, you know, credit card debt. So it was tough. And eventually on my third year, I met uh, someone that owned a few condos and he wanted somebody to manage the condos. What happens is I had a Brazilian, there's a Brazilian magazine here. I'm from Brazil. All so right. there's a Brazilian magazine here and I have a net, I had a net in this magazine and he saw the ad and he called me and he said, Hey, he was Brazilian. He said a bunch, I own a bunch of condos in downtown. I want somebody to help me to manage. I have more coming that time in downtown. People were buying everything pre-construction was very hot. And so I met this person, you know, that, had that condo and I started like working with him and I leased all his condos and then kind of downtown was starting up again. So there's a lot of new people there and a lot of new buildings. So I get to be first in a lot of the new buildings and I had a lot of clients in every building. And that's kind of how I built my, I start specializing in lofts and condos and that's when things started to turn and everything you know, I opened my own office and I became a broker. And at some point I have, I had like over 10 agents working under me. And wow, that's yeah, a lot. So, so that's how I started. And what challenges did you face when you started uh, Loftway? And how did you overcome them? Well, first I tried to, I worked for like three big companies. And at that time, downtown was still not a super hip place. People that were coming to downtown LA were like adventures. And every time I switched from one company to the other, it was like, hey, they told me, oh, we are open to opening an office downtown. We're going to want to open an office. We want you to be our guy there. But they never did. They never, they keep telling me they're going to do it, but the numbers didn't work for them. And they never did. So eventually, I was looking for a space for another client of mine. Uh, to open like a dry cleaners or something. And I saw this space and I thought it was perfect for my office. And uh, I, I tried to get the others on board, the big companies to see if they want to do it together. They didn't. You know, I had a lot of listings at the time, so things were looking good. So I just decided to take the leap and, uh, you know, take the risk and get the rent the office. I had one of my architects that are also my clients to build the office and and then just start from there and start wow. hiring agents and such an amazing story i mean you're very successful and you have a lot of experience i've been to all sides i've been an agent i've been a broker i've been you know team leader <laughs> team leader yeah our office it works like a team but it's actually better than a team for who will join us because when you're in a team the team is under the big company, so they have to pay the commission to the big company, and then you have to pay, you know, share your commission with the team. So your commissions are very, you know, low. your percentage that you make are very low. But yeah. here, because I'm a broker, they don't really, the commissions are much higher. So if you join my brokerage, it works as a team in a way because they're sending leads, but they get much higher commission. Very nice. So are you planning to recruit more, more people in LA? You know, funny enough, I actually never recruit like per se. I mean, I had agents that I met during my showings and stuff. And I say, hey, you should come work in the office. And that's kind of how I got everyone. And then many times people actually come to me. They just see, they like how the marketing of the company looks and the image of the company. And they just approach me and ask, you know, do you hire agents? And I never really, the only time I put an ad to hire an agent to help me with the leases, uh, turns out that this agent that I hired that responded to the ad, which became also a good friend of mine, he used to wor work with my mentor at Keller Williams. I didn't even know. He just happened to answer this ad and then it just happened that was a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. So it was a funny coincidence. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, what trends are you currently seeing in LA in the real estate market at the moment? Well, LA, you know, is a big town, so it depends on the area. In downtown, mm -hmm. it's a little slow now. 
uh, a lot of the offices are closed. So the, a lot of the people that live downtown LA was people that work in the offices. But because a lot of the offices are closed, there's less people here. And I think with condos in general, because of the interest rates, it's also a big slowdown. Because let's see, if you can't afford a house that costs a million dollars, yeah, your monthly payment is going to be much lower without having to compute the HOA fees because the HOA fees in downtown go anywhere from like five hundred to three thousand dollars a month. So that adds a lot wow. on your payment and it reduces your affordability. So that's why condos are a little slower than houses. Wow! But you know, in, there's areas of down of Los Angeles that properties are still selling with multiple offers. And it's hard to get something. So it depends on the area. But okay. the moment, I don't think it's going to crash or anything like that. I don't no, think no, no. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, it's only slow for now, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future, right? Yeah, all my clients always ask me, hey, when is going to be the next 2008? 2008 is going to happen so we can buy you know, a lot of stuff. Because <laughs> that during 2008, I learned how to do short sales. And a lot of my clients were buying short sales and you know flipping them for a lot of money. So a lot of my clients ask me, when is it going to happen? I said, well, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I mean, unless we have an earthquake, maybe. <laughs> and then we had a pandemic and it changed a little bit. So yeah. during the pandemic, I had six escrows. And then on the next day, they all canceled. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And then eventually everything got hot, but it's still... The condo market was not as hot. People were moving to houses and looking for backyards and outdoor space. So the condos got, even during the pandemic, they are not as hot. So you're specializing in condos and lofts. And are, are these, uh, you know, outside of the downtown or? They're everywhere. Like they go anywhere from like uh, Long Beach to Marina del Rey, Pasadena. Now, the majority are in downtown just because in 2005, they start redoing all these buildings and there was a lot of investment coming to downtown. So a lot of them are downtown, but there is lofts everywhere. Awesome, awesome. And what advice would you give to somebody looking to get into the real estate market in LA at this moment? I mean, you got to work hard. There's no shortcuts, right? You have to work every day at it, get to know the inventory, you know, go to the open houses, study the MLS, and do classes and learn and learn and have, you know, these days, anybody can go to Zillow and find properties. What they want is your expertise. They want a, somebody that knows what they're talking about and know the buildings or know the areas. Um, that's the difference now, you know. Okay. And what advice would you give to a first-time home buyer or condo buyer in your area? I mean, right, depends. In the downtown now, they... they it looks good for them. There's a lot of uh, properties listed. The prices are negotiable. Um, it depends. If they're looking for a house that is a million dollars, they're going to have a hard time because everybody's looking for a house that is a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if you're paying cash, we have a client here that has been looking for a house and they're paying cash and they're still getting outbid everywhere. So you just got to be prepared to remove contingencies and be aggressive, you know. If that's what you want to do. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So before we leave, uh, what advice would you give generally to, to, to the real estate market? Something people should know about you. About me? Or... Yeah. Yeah. About you. I mean, like, like an advice from you to the public, to the audience. I think the more, if you're going to use a real estate agent, which you should, because real estate is a very complicated transaction. There is a big difference between the agents that are top 1% and the rest. Like the top 1% of the agents, they're very similar. Like you can't go wrong. Like if you go with somebody that is in top 1%, they're all going to be doing similar things. They're all going to be good and give you a good service. But there is a lot of bad agents out there. And I encounter them all the time. And I sometimes I wish the sellers knew that their agents are bad because they don't even know. They don't know what the agent's doing most of the time, you know? But sometimes I call agents and I want to show the property. They never call me back or they live in a different area and they don't want to drive there. There is a lot of that. 
And sometimes a bad agent can kill the transaction and can also cost you a lot of money. So it's important to go with somebody that is a good agent and established. And that that's the biggest thing. Okay. And are you training your agents, uh, Christian? I or? do train my agents because, you know, actually I wrote a book, which I sent it to you guys uh, oh. it's on Amazon. And uh, it's actually called, you got your license. Now what? <laughs> so, Because <laughs> once you get your license, you don't really learn anything that you're going to use every day. You just learn the language of real estate and just things that you never, probably never going to use again. Real estate, the basic real estate is how to get clients, right? That's the main thing you want to know because that's what real estate, if you don't have a client, since you're self-employed, if you don't have a client, you're unemployed. Because <laughs> then, you, you know, it's basically that's what it is. One. So the key on training is how to get clients. And then once you get the clients, you know, there's things that you can learn how to maneuver the transactions and get your successful closing. But I think the main focus is how to get clients and keep them happy so you get more clients from your clients. That's another important thing. Awesome. That is great to hear. Perfect. So yeah, it is actually great to have you here at Icons of Real Estate because you are really an icon. You really have the experience we need to nurture this channel and the audience. You know, some of our audience are people who are trying to get into the real estate business and they don't know how to do it. So they have to listen from people like you, Christian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I hope it helps someone out there trying to get into real estate. It will. It will. So thank you very much. And it was such a pleasure, Christian. Thank you. Have a good See. day. Bye-bye.